Okay, YouTubers and space detectives, today we are taking solace from planet Earth, escaping the madness and craziness of our insane planet. And we're looking at this image from Mars. Now, this was taken way back in 2012 by the Curiosity rover, and it's from Sol 60, so that's day 60 on Mars in Gale Crater. Uh, the rover hadn't moved very far from its landing spot at this point, and was basically just having a good look around before travelling off to where it is now, okay? And this is an insane image, absolutely nuts. And as you may have gathered from the cover of the video, this is, I think, some kind of crab or arthropod type creature. Now an arthropod, for those of you that don't know, is a creature with an exoskeleton. And we have many types of them on Earth. And I'm just gonna quickly show you a couple of examples here. This is a giant crab from Earth. This is called the king crab. This guy caught one and he, I think he cooked it or something. He's a Japanese street food giant crab cooking by grandpa. Yeah, and it's actually bigger than grandpa there. So <laughs> on Earth, some of these crabs can get really, really quite huge. Um, I've caught many in the past fishing with my brothers when we were kids, spider crabs and things like that. They can get pretty big, but this one's massive. Um, and the, the one on Mars we're looking at today is very large. And I'm going to show you now the meme image, which you would have seen on the front cover. Now, this is absolutely insane. And I've been struggling with this, not only because of the size of it, which is about two feet tall, possibly bigger, possibly a bit smaller. It's between about one and a half and three feet. I can't tell you exactly, but it's quite large. We, we've got a gigapan here that I did. This is just made up of a few a few images from the set. And you can see the rover down here at the bottom. Unfortunately, it's only in black and white. There's no color image of this. So we're looking from the mass cam onto the rover part here. This is actually attached to, I think, the uh, Mali cam, the back of it, which is the arm with, with a camera on the end and the drill, which drills into the ground. So we're looking from about seven feet up because the mouse cam's about seven foot off the ground. And it's looking across this kind of dune here, this sandy, very dry, sandy dune. And we've got a, a dune ridge there, a small ridge. And we have this creature. Now, at first I thought this is oh, just some kind of weird rock. And then I started looking at it. Now. For those of you that want to download the image, I, I advise you to watch my previous video and it tells you how to clean up these images very easily by blurring them just a little tiny bit, okay? So if you want to do that, go back to my previous video and it shows you how to do that. So we have this thing, right. Now, even in this black and white image, which is not amazingly high res, it's quite well detailed actually. The lighting's very good. They took a lot of images of this, so they, um, the, the rover, was obviously interested in it, maybe because it thought it was a hazard that needed to be avoided. Uh, the rover is programmed to to log sort of larger rocks and avoid them, basically, to stop it getting damaged, basically. So, but this thing's big, it's about two foot tall, and you can see, if I zoom out, let's see if we can get it all in, we've got the rover there at the bottom, and this is probably about 15 feet away from the rover, I would say, something like that. 15, possibly a little bit more, and it's still very big. So this is at least two feet tall, I would say, and possibly three, but nearer two. And even without doing anything to this, you can see three limbs here, one here, one here, and one here. And this, they're even jointed, like on the crab. You can see the joints here, right? But what's really crazy about it, now I'm gonna show you the uh, enhancement I've got here. What's really, really crazy about this is it has what looks sub a bit like a human face, which is insane, but not totally insane because there are examples on earth uh, that do have what look like slightly human features. Many animals on, on earth have kind of faces that look a bit human or have eyes and nose and mouth configuration a bit like ours. Even types of fish and stuff. Uh, they've got sort of human qualities to their face, some of them. 
some of them look very strange. Some of these deep sea creatures are really the things like the blobfish and that kind of thing. That, you know, they're just insane looking creatures. Now, this was a salt lake, and I imagine this lived in the water. But we do have many varieties on Earth that live out of water a lot of the time. And they store water in their shell, which they then use like a like breathing apparatus, and then they, they breathe the water through their shell, you know. So they're quite hardy and adaptable creatures. And in fact, I did um, do some videos on Mars crabs a long time ago. I'll show you clips of those in a minute. But let me just outline this first, and then we'll look at some other examples of crabs and, and how they can look very, very strange indeed. Uh, and this is no exception. But being a Mars crab, there are some glaring differences here. The main one being that it doesn't have enough limbs. Now, I would imagine if this is a crab, it may not be a crab, it may be a similar type of crustacean. I would imagine that there would be more legs here, but we're only seeing the top part of the thing. And I would imagine there are more legs down here, like another limb here, because there should be four, f f well, four limbs on each side, plus pincers, which are like arms. So they basically have 10 appendages, right? On Earth anyway. This one doesn't, but I think some of it's buried. We're only seeing the top half of it. I think this may go down into the ground like this, and there may be more leg, another leg here underneath this one, okay? And in fact, looking at it now, this, this rock, possible rock here, may be part of one of these limbs broken off. Um, I don't know, but let me just outline it for you. And what I'll do, I've got some animations I've put together of, of the different stages I went through, enhancing this and how I got to this, okay? Um, but you can see all this in the raw image. And, it, and what is really crazy about this is that it seems to be eating something. Now we have what I would construe as a facial area here, right? The head comes round like this. That's the head. Very large parts of the head there coming coming right round. And then we have the limbs, obviously. This one probably was joined to that. This one comes right across to here. And then we have this one, which looks like an arm holding something, okay? Now, this may seem crazy, and this is why I've been struggling with this, because I really think this is mental. And it is really hard to get your head around. Um, it seems to be holding what looks like a small creature with a head here, with ears, like that. It looks a bit like Yoda from Star Wars. Eyes there, and a mouth, and a nose. And this creature, crab type creature, the arm is coming up here and holding it in its hand. It seems to have some kind of hand or something going on here. And this creature, which I've colorized blue, looks like it's been nibbled and, and uh, half eaten because we've got lots of interesting te textures in it there. And what I think this is behind is the other hand here. And we have mouth here. We have a sort of nose type structure, but it may not be a nose. It may just look like one. Here's the face coming up. We have an eye like structure here and an eye structure here. Okay. Now, th I know this looks crazy, and it is, but this is an alien planet. And like I've said a hundred times before, we should not expect things to conform to our rather narrow perceptions of reality when it comes to creatures, because we've only really scratch the surface of what's on Mars. I've shown hundreds of different uh, creatures of many different species, including other crabs as well as, as um, things that are like scorpions and, and, and uh, fossilized crabs and things like that. I'll show you some of those in a minute. But these legs, you can actually see the joints here. All right, let's get rid of that. Now, now you've seen that, look at the limbs. We've got one coming here with a a joint there, there's a joint. So they're in sections. This is an arthropod with limbs in sections. We've got a joint here, there's another joint, and that kind of joins up to that, like that. We've got joints, it's jointed. 
So these are limbs, it's not just a rock. But un unlike the others, this one kind of comes around like that and just kind of tucks under this. So it's kind of joined in there. So this is like a shortened, a foreshortened limb, which is used as an arm, like you would get on the crab. But of course, on crabs on earth, you would have a, like big pincers on it like this, sticking up like that, okay? Or some of them have quite small pincers. Um, so is it possible that crabs on Mars evolved to a much higher level and actually developed types of hands on there instead of pincers? Or more more articulate um, digits on on, the, on their limbs, like fingers and, and the stuff, is that possible? Now, let me, let's go in real close here. Let's get rid of that. If you look really closely down here, we've got this limb coming down like this, and we've got all these nodules and bumps and spiky bits on, like you would see on a crab. Those bits sticks out like that. It comes along here but we've got some complex stuff here almost like fingers or something going on here sticking out but they don't make a lot of visual sense um, it's weird really really weird so what we may be seeing here and also in here we've got a, a joint here it seems to be a joint and part of the this is part of the body here like a shoulder, almost, here, coming down there. And then the limbs come off here. We've got these joints here for the for these two limbs, right? See that? But when you're looking close here, you've got these strange things in here, like joined to it. Now, these may be barnacles or, or some kind of small sea creatures that, have, that were once living on this crab. Because if this was underwater, it may have had lots of little even plants and, and things like barnacles and tiny little creatures living on it. Now what these little creatures do on Earth is they, they feed on the waste material from the crab. In other words, when the crab is eating something, bits of that food will then fall off and these little creatures that live on the crab, parasitic creatures, will then feed on those bits floating around in the water. Little particles of flesh and meat and stuff. Okay. That's what, that's what they do on Earth. I would expect the same on Mars. Um, but the really crazy thing, now let me show you the raw clip here. You can even see in the raw clip that there is, let's make that a bit smaller a minute, hang on. You can even see a little head just here and it comes up to there and round like this. And you've got an eye here and an eye here. It's a bit vague. You've got to really play with the contrast on this. This is raw, this clip. But when you push the contrast, that stands out, and then you sharpen it, and it comes out, okay? It's there, it's definitely there. Um, it may not be a creature we even know. I mean, this it looks a bit like a, a small little monkey, or, or perhaps even a, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but it, it looks like some kind of little creature here. It looks a bit like Yoda with big ears sticking out like this. There's the head, right? And the chin there, nose, eye, eye, and mouth. Doesn't look very happy. And it seems to be being held in this hand thing here on this arm. And this is what looks like the body, which doesn't look like it's in very good shape. But we've got these quite complex parts here, which may be part of this creature here. Like, like an arm and a shoulder and bones or something. I don't know. It looks like it's kind of half eaten. And this other hand, if we, let's call it a hand for now. It's not really a hand, but this other appendage here is, the, is from the other side of the crab type creature, from the other side, and would match up to this one here. Right? So this is the arm in front, and the other arm is behind or around the other side, but we can see the hand type structure coming up here and this is the crab's mouth right so this seems to be trying to f hold or feed from probably grab parts of this thing and feed it to itself like maybe like it's tearing parts of this off and then pushing it into its mouth now is this crab alive this crab creature 
this giant crab creature, is it actually alive? It doesn't look it, but how would we know? I mean, crabs are actually designed, many of them, or not designed, I should say, they have evolved, many of them, to look like rocks. That's part of their camouflage system, as do many creatures on Earth, on land and in the, in the ocean. Many of them are very well camouflaged and um, do look like rock. And we have, but we have these kind of barnacle type things. This one even looks like a little head, like a little skull thing here. When you zoom in, this one here, it's insane. Absolutely insane. So we, we have like obvious parts. We have a face. So I just make that a bit thicker. We have a face here. We have a joint there. What well, seems to be a joint. The head comes right round. Like that, obviously. Excuse my outlining here. It's not very accurate. Um, I usually take a lot longer. And then we have the sort of body here. Right, which comes right up to here. And then we have these legs with joints. Now this is probably part of one of them. This is probably broken off this one. Well, there may be another one under, like I said. There's the joint. There's the other joint there. And it comes down like that. And that's probably joined to this here, right? And then there's probably another one below that in the sand. And obviously others around the other side of this body. So we have a, what seems to be quite a clear crustacean here, and it's very large, about two, or perhaps three feet, but it's probably nearer two feet. And it's even holding something that it seems to be eating. Absolutely mental. Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to show you the, the clips I've done. And what it does is this, this will outline to you the different body parts as I went through, okay? I went through the um, thing here. Now, I'll show you from the raw clip, which is up here. Where is it? We want that one. And I'll go through the sequence of how I got to that, okay? Should make a bit more sense to you. Now, here's the raw clip. Pretty clear. Now, there are a number of images of this thing. There's about four, I think, four or five. And some of them are very, very bright, and some of them are very, very dark. This is the best one because it, was, it had nice shadow and it's fairly bright as well. So it's good contrast in this. But I used different light filters on, on the different filters on the camera and came up with a bunch of them. But this is the best one. So there's raw clip, enhanced clip, and zoomed in. I've upped the contrast considerably there, as you can see. But that's pushed the detail out. And I've outlined this creature thing that it's holding, whatever that is. It may not be a creature, it may be just something else. There's the face. And you can see the mouth detail here. It even seems to have a human-like mouth with teeth. But it's very, very strange. Probably the strangest thing I've found so far. Here's the, the articulate arm. Just there, okay. So that's obviously a limb that's adapted into an arm. There's the other two limbs there. And like I said, this may be part of one of them here. And there's probably more in the, in the dirt here under the sand. Okay, so that actually is quite cool because it's separated the body, the, the head and body part here. So you can actually see the different parts, okay? And there we, there we go. And then I initially thought that this thing here was a rock behind, but judging by the shadow here, which is the same luminosity as this shadow here, I thought it's probably part of the thing because it's, it has the same density to it. So this is part of the other limb from around the other side of the crab thing, which I then colorized, okay? There we are. So that's it, that is it. And it's absolutely insane. What can I say? Um, I have found other examples of crabs on Mars, but this is the best one by far. And the fact it's actually holding something suggests to me that this thing might actually be alive or it somehow froze in that pose and has calcified and mummified 
like many of the other creatures that I've found in the area, um, in this lake bed, including fish, dogs, cats, um, crustaceans, apes, and even humans, or humanoids, I should say. Okay? I mean, they're all over the place. Um, the point is, we're missing a lot of these things. I miss this. I've been through these images three times now. There's, there's like hundreds of thousands of them, right? I've been through all of them. This is my third pass. And I found this giant crab just sitting there. I missed it the first and second and third time round. This is probably the fourth, <laughs> third or fourth time now. I'm going back through the whole lot again. And uh, basically, I missed it. So if I'm, if I'm missing stuff this big, what else have I missed? Jesus Christ. Absolutely insane. So there we are. Um, there are other, there's the, the black and white one again. And you can see, even before I colorized this, you can see that creature here. You can see the eyes, nose and mouth there. There's the mouth, little chin there. And some torn up body. And this looks like a kind of hand holding part of this material and feeding it. Now that's not the actions of a dead creature. But maybe it was preserved. It was, it was possibly blast frozen when the atmosphere was destroyed by <clears throat> either a nuclear war or other massive explosion, which would have blown a hole through the atmosphere. Oxygen would have been sucked out of the atmosphere, um, and it, everything would have been, been sort of blast frozen in a matter of a minute or so, or a few minutes, and would have been blast frozen in the very act that they were doing at that moment. And this is probably what happened to this. But because it has an exoskeleton, it's r remarkably well preserved because all the fleshy material is on the inside. There may have been stalk eye stalks on this at, at some point. These look like eye sockets here. Um, but most crabs, they don't, they don't have eyes like that. They, they have different types of eyes. Um, they, let's have a look at a few crabs now. They have eyes on stalks. You know, you've got, you've got things like this, you know, where you've got these stalk-like structures where the eyes are. Um, in fact, I've got some that I found on Mars here. I'm just going to show you those very quickly. And if you don't think there are human faces on crabs, well, some of them do have face-like structures on their shells. And that's, that may be what we're seeing here. I'm not saying it's actually a human face. I'm saying it appears to be one because it's shaped like that it doesn't mean it is one okay so i look at look at the nodules and little hairy kind of bits on this very similar to what we're looking at lumpy kind of nodules all over it and uh, i did do this illustration many years ago i'll show you that in a second this is something i found on mars near where we are today this is part of a crab here this is tiny it's only about an inch across but this is what the eyes are like on many crabs. Now these vary obviously, and they, there's thousands and thousands of types of crabs on Earth, all shapes and sizes. Some of them are giant, some of them are tiny. I would expect the same on Mars. Uh, but the, this is part of a, a crab here with the two eyes here. It's just a shell, no legs. Uh, the rest of it's buried. And uh, you've got these black, big black sort of stalk eyes, okay, sticking up. And obviously the, the, the front limbs have adapted into, into pincers here. But the Mars thing seems to have some kind of hand structure instead, which is crazy, absolutely insane. Okay. Um, now I did this illustration. I was, I've, I've always been fascinated by Mars. I did this back in the 90s um, when I was at college, I think. And uh, before, probably after I was at college. And I've used this on a couple of um, video covers. And this is a spider crab, but I, I turned it into a tank by putting a sort of tank uh, gun on it and a, a, um, a turret. I zoom into that for you. Now, look at the joints, right? They've got very specific joints, how, how big kind of long limbs. Spider crabs can get enormous, but their bodies are quite small compared to their limbs. They've got very long limbs. Some crabs have very large bodies and small limbs, depending on what part of the environment they, they hold or live in. Um, but I just thought that you'd like to see that. This is one of my favourite images that I did. And you've got these guys shooting at it on Mars, in, in firing grenade launchers at it and stuff. And uh, there's, there's a one of the soldiers here has actually been impaled after having his leg 
torn off here. And uh, there's one climbing up here, put under this leg to try and disable it. And one of them's already blown up here. <laughs> There we are. I, well, I, I did want to be a, a professional illustrator, but I ended up just doing portraits for, for many years um, of people and animals, people and their pets and stuff like that, which is pretty boring. Uh, but there we are. One of my favourite images from, from that era, this is done in ink, black and white, and then coloured afterwards. But that's from a long time ago. So there we are. So I, 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 I'm not an expert on crabs. I just like some of them because they look like machines. They've got a very mechanical sort of um, nature to them, you know? And the hardened exoskeleton makes them very tough and very adaptable. And I've always thought, since I was a young kid, back in the 70s, that there were probably crabs and spiders and other arthropods on Mars, like insects and beetles and that kind of thing. And I have shown some. And some of them are even flying around, okay? So there are insects on Mars, so if there are those types of arthropods, there are probably crustaceans. This is a lake bed, of course. And there'll probably be things like scorpions and lobsters and that kind of thing. I have shown fossils of, of things before that look like little crabs. Uh, there, there is this video which I'll link to as well. This is um, former NASA scientist claims conspiracy about Mars photo. This guy actually is from NASA. Uh, what's his name? His name is um, Hoover, Richard Hoover. He used to work for NASA. And he claims that NASA destroyed uh, a crinoid fossil, which is a primitive plant-like sea creature. There was a, a crinoid fossil on a rock and the Opportunity rover destroyed it with its drill, its rat drill. The rock abrasion tool, okay? So this is Guy from NASA whistleblowing on this and this was years ago. This is 2014, right? But that incident happened years be earlier than that. This, I think it happened in 2011, I, I think, or something like that. So there we are. I'll put a link to that at the end of the video. This is a little fossil in the rock. This is tiny. This is only about any, half an inch across. Really small. That's why you can't see much detail here, because it's tiny. And we've got this weird little thing here with what look like limbs coming down, which looks like a, a fossil of some kind of little small crustacean. It may not be a crab, but some other similar thing. There are millions of types of these probably on Earth, and many of them are still yet to be discovered and actually catalogued. Things like insects and beetles and, and crabs and things. There, there are millions of them. Um, there's also this video I did called Crabs on Mars. And there's this one here, which is one of my earliest finds from 2013, this, this find. And there's a little crab here with orange legs, which they seem to have on Mars as well. Okay, uh, It's like a little crab crawling along. So I actually think some of these are alive. I don't think they're dead. And this large one we're looking at today, this giant, um, is is bigger and chunkier than any we've got on Earth. Um, even that giant one I showed you earlier, um, it, it's nowhere near as big in the body. Uh, this one here, I mean that's big, but the one we're looking at today kind of is kind of sat up, kind of sitting on its ass instead of like belly down like this one. It's absolutely mental. Um, I mean, some of these do get really quite large. Some of them climb trees, some of them live out of water, and they just go back to the, the ocean's edge and, and uh, stock up on fresh water, they have a quick dip, refill their tanks, and then climb back up the tree. So they, they can live out of water, a lot of them. Uh, most of them don't, of course. Um, but they're extremely hardy creatures, and I would imagine they would have been some of the last creatures to, to survive on Mars, even after the cataclysm. Um, as long as there was some sort of water somewhere. And they may even live in Gale Crater now, and they may be living ones, because um, Gale Crater does have a thermal, a thermal kind of vent in, in the bottom of it. In other words, there's probably water bubbling up from the ground. So there's probably lobsters and uh, lobster and crab-like creatures living in that right now as we speak. But the rover isn't going to it for some reason. They seem more interested in trying to climb Mount Sharp but I don't think they'll ever do that either because Mount Sharp is covered in buildings like pyramids and domes and stuff. And we really don't, I don't think they really want to show those to us up close because it would totally give the game away. Um, so there we are. Uh, that was it really. Um, so there are giant crabs on Earth and it seems there are on Mars, but the, the problem with this one on Mars 
it's absolutely enormous. The, the limbs are quite short. The body is huge. I mean, this may not be a crab. It's probably some other type of crustacean that just looks a bit like a crab. Okay, but it has a human face. Now, I was told. Now, I, I do know people in the British military. I was told many years ago, before I even started this channel, but one of the reasons I started getting into Mars stuff even more after I heard this was that I was told by a member of British intelligence, someone who has much higher clearance than people like Nick Pope, who's the famous UFO writer and, and author, much higher clearance than him, way levels above. I was told by this guy that there are creatures on Mars which are kind of like giant crabs that have human-like faces. And I completely dismissed it at the time. But that's always been in the back of my mind. I thought maybe one day I'll find something like that. And here is one of them. Um, they've got crab-like or lobster-like limbs. It's going close. With these lumpy, nodgly bits and spiky bits on, just like crabs have. Okay. They've got all these kind of lumps and, and, and spikes and nodules. And there's some crazy detail in here. So I'll put some real close-ups in there for you in the video at the end, coming up in a second. What do you think? I mean, is it a crab or is it a lobster or is it some kind of scorpion or is it... This part reminded me of a scorpion, this bit that curves round. So maybe, who knows. But w was that person from British Intelligence I spoke to back in the 90s, in the early 90s, tipping me off with real information because it seems that it, it, it was true. I completely disbelieved it at the time. But it's one of the, it, that was one of the reasons I started getting into these Mars images, not only because I was disabled and, and couldn't go out or anything, and had a lot of time on my hands, but because of information that was told by people that used to turn up to our meetings um, at the British Flying Saucer Bureau in Bristol, the oldest ufologist group in the world. Right? So that guy tipped me off with something that was correct. It's just taken me a long time to get to it and find one. So I would imagine this, this would explain why some of these rocks seem to have weird faces on them, um, because some of them may be this crab, and what we may be seeing is the crab shell at the top here, this part, with a face on it. Now these faces may have varied drastically in, in, in shape and, and, and actual features, but you can see the eye there, and the eye there. These look like human sort of features and a nose sort of structure there, and a mouth. And if you go in close, you can actually see the in mouth parts here. Let's go in real close. There we are. So there's mouth parts here. I'm not saying it's a human mouth. I'm just saying we're seeing part of the mouth. So that is unbelievable. And you can see why I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to explain this. So there we have it. So the British Flying Saucer Bureau was started in back in a brief history. Started back in 1947, I think it was, by pilots from the RAF. So it was a, started by the military to investigate the Foo Fighters that were seen following some of our bombers over France and Germany at the end of World War II. And these Foo Fighters actually carried on buzzing around our aircraft even after the war, and were probably some of the same strange craft that were seen and were harassing pilots in America as well. So there we are. So sometimes people tell you things and you dismiss them at the time and then 20 or 30 years later these things turn out to be correct. So it seems that the British intelligence and probably American intelligence and NASA know full well that these creatures are there. If I was tipped off 30 odd years ago um, 20, or 20 or 30 odd years ago then it, it may turn out that they've known for a very long time since the 1970s I'd imagine since we went there at first so they probably found stuff then that we, we just haven't been told about so there we are so when people come up to you and say strange things uh, don't necessarily dismiss it just keep it in your mind because one day it may just turn out to be true and uh, there we are so thank you for watching everybody I know this is a bit crazy. I'm still in shock of finding this. And not only have we got a crab, but we, it seems to be holding something like a little creature, like a little monkey-type creature or something, that it seems to be chewing on. 
or at least it was before it was freeze dried when the atmosphere was blasted away in an explosion and everything was frozen instantly. Unbelievable, okay? So thanks for watching everybody. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you do comment, please keep it clean. Thanks for watching. See you soon.